Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's Cybersecurity Roadmap presentation. I'm Steve Churchin. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Zypro, and we'll be walking you through our 2021 Cybersecurity Roadmap. Now, I love interaction, I love questions, so if you have any questions at any time during this presentation, please put them in the chat box and we'll have a small Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So today's agenda will include talking about who Zypro is and the technology that we offer to the market. We'll talk about our partnerships with existing enterprise vendors, and we'll talk about our 2021 roadmap and more importantly with regards to change management and privileged session management as well as identity access and governance. We'll talk about data analytics and the integrations that we have with technologies like Splunk in Elasticsearch and some of the new things you're going to be able to do there. And we'll talk about a very, very hot topic today and that's multi-factor authentication and some of the new technology that will be coming to market this year. And we'll wrap that all up with monitoring and compliance, and more importantly, security intelligence and analytics, and how we bring all of this data together to paint the big picture of what's happening in your environment. So a little bit about Zypro. We were founded in 1983 in Simi Valley, California, just outside of Los Angeles. We've got expertise in cybersecurity, compliance, and database management. We're globally distributed, so we've got folks all over the world ready to help you in your time zone. And a very strong partnership with HPE. In fact, a couple of our products come delivered as part of the nonstop operating system, and that's Merged Audit, well, Merged Audit and uh, Zygate User Authentication. And recently, we've got the only SailPoint and CyberArk certified integrations for nonstop. We've also got patented security intelligence technology that'll help you with your threat detection and security intelligence initiatives. So Zypro is ultimately your trusted security partner. If you've got a project, if you've got a security project or an integration project or some other modernization project that you have in your environment, come talk to us, let us know what that is. We've likely got the technology that can help you. If not, we're likely working through our R&D efforts on the technology that can help you. Zypro has been in this business for a very, very long time. We've got 700 plus customers worldwide. We've got a globally distributed 24 by seven support operation. So if you have, if you need help in, in your time zone, we're ready and standing by to help. And we're fluent in over 24 different languages. So if you're more comfortable communicating with us in a language other than English, please let us know. We've likely got somebody on our staff that can help you out. Zypro's global strategy is based on three key tenets, and it's ultimately Zypro being able to be your enterprise security partner. We're not just a vendor. We're in this with you together. We want to make sure that you're successful with any any one of these projects that you've got going on. And that's where we want to come in and help leverage the existing technology that we have or some of the new technology that we're bringing to market that might be a fit for what you're trying to do. And we do that focusing in three key areas. The first one is innovation. And like I mentioned, it's leveraging Zypro's technology and expertise to get us into new markets and that be that a project that you've got going on or some other uh, item on your roadmap that you're looking to deliver on, we'll be more than happy to be right there with you to, to make sure that we're bringing innovative solutions that address your real world challenges. So we can cross that off your list and move on to the next one. We also realize that modernization is a key business driver today. And the more we can simplify business processes and modernize the user experience, using technology and automation, the faster we can accomplish items that you've got going either on your roadmap or on your project list. And we're hearing this a lot is integration is, and we've put a lot of focus into this area is making sure that our strategic partnerships can ensure the nonstop, um, the nonstop server workloads can be integrated with your existing enterprise investments. So if you've got vendor solutions at the enterprise level, and nonstop needs to be integrated with them. We'll talk about what we've done and what we're delivering this year that will help you. But if there's other projects or other vendors that you need to integrate that with, please let us know. And we're likely working on something in the background that can help you. With that said, 
this is just the tip of the iceberg of the technology partnerships that we have going on. So these are probably very recognizable logos in your environment. Most nonstop customers have at least two of these in their environment, if not more. An active project, most of them have active projects to integrate the nonstop with these technologies. So we're gonna be talking uh, a lot about these particular vendors over the next few slides. But again, there's gonna be, our roadmap will include bringing on additional vendors that'll help you um, with further integrations that may not be on this list quite yet. So high level of where our roadmap is and what we're gonna be focusing on, what we focused on last year, what we're delivering this year and further afield. One of the big key items that we delivered last year was we know that our customers wanna get away from managing passwords. Passwords are cumbersome, passwords are difficult to manage, and passwords are a vulnerability, especially when it comes to service accounts. These are accounts that are not attached to a user, but rather used for automated processes. So what we introduced in some of our products last year was certificate-based authentication is extending the extending our authentication capabilities to allow the user to choose between an interactive password or certificate-based authentication. And this is primarily for service processes that Zygate products use. This is for Compliance Pro, this is for Zygate Identity Connector, and a few other products. And what this helps you get away from is when passwords are rotated, for a service account, that breaks the integration, that breaks the process that that account was responsible for. Until that password is, until a user can go in there and update that password. The challenge is now you've got a user that knows the password and the next time a password is rotated because of a password policy, that integration is gonna break again. Certificate-based authentication will solve this problem. It'll make sure that you don't need to use passwords. You don't need to use, you don't need to rotate passwords. If you rotate passwords, you're not hit by the integration breaking. And certificates are natively supported by many enterprise applications. Uh, now we're bringing that same functionality, that ease of use to our Zygate products. If you wanna find out more, come reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you with this. We also introduced some support for our Zygate Simon product, we introduced OSS support. Um, this product is available through HPE. If you're interested in finding out more, please let us know. We've, um, we've also brought Clem credential vaulting to Zygate Identity Connector. This is for our CyberArk, or this is for the CyberArk password vault. Not only can you now log Guardian user accounts in your CyberArk vault, you can also log your Clem credentials. These are your your cluster IO modules, your network CLIM, and your um, disk controller, and your telco CLIM, all of those have user accounts bound to them. All of those user accounts can now be vaulted in the CyberArk vaults using the Zygate Identity Connector. We introduced, we introduced application support for multi-factor authentication, which we'll talk about in a few slides. And we brought a new Security One module to market, and that's our compliance module. This year, we've got integrations coming to market with ServiceNow and uh, additional integrations with CyberArk, as well as with Splunk. We're gonna be focusing on some new authentication protocols with Zygate user authentication, mainly Java Web Tokens, OAuth2 authentication, biometrics, and true single sign-on. We're gonna be extending the SailPoint and CyberArk capabilities to your application. And we're gonna be introducing some advanced analytics into Security One, as well as a Windows console monitor. This will monitor your Windows server attached to your nonstop. Your Windows console that you use to manage your nonstop ecosystem will be able to monitor that Windows environment. And looking further out into next year, we've got PCI DSS, or PCI DSS that's gonna be released later on this year, and we're already actively working to get that functionality available to you by early 2022, as well as TLS 1.3 and a few other Security One enhancements. Okay, jumping into our first, um, our first solution that's coming to market this year. It's our ServiceNow integration. What this will do is integrate your Zygate Access Control with ServiceNow. And the, the, the workflow is essentially when a, a privilege command is issued on the nonstop, 
typically, if that user has access to issue that command, the command would be executed. But now where every change ticket needs to, needs to be validated and ServiceNow in most environments is your change control system, we're, this integration will allow you to issue a command on the nonstop before that command is executed. This integration will reach out to ServiceNow, validate that there's an active ticket in ServiceNow before that, for that command being issued. If ServiceNow can validate that that ticket is valid, there's, a, there's an existing ticket for that command, it will execute the command. Otherwise, that command is denied. Even if the user has access to issue that command, if it's not within the parameters of the ticket inside of ServiceNow, that command is, will fail. So for example, if I issue a command on the nonstop, this integration will prompt me for the ServiceNow ticket number, the, it'll capture the user that's running the command. It'll capture the system that the command is being executed on. It'll, it'll capture the timestamp of when the command is being issued. And it allows me to capture a few other variables. All of that payload is then sent to ServiceNow. And unless everything matches in the ServiceNow ticket, for example, the ticket number matches, the user that's issuing the command matches, the system where the command is being issued matches, and the time window where that particular command needs to be issued matches, only then will that command be executed. Otherwise, like I mentioned, the command is denied. This ensures that you've got proper evidence con uh, collection in a central repository, that unless ServiceNow is making the ruling, that command will not be executed. This also helps you comply with PCI DSS requirements 1.1.1 and 6.4, which are around change management and change control. This will be available in our Q1 release. So look out here in the next couple of, uh, next week or so, you'll see the Zygate Q1 release going out where this functionality will be available. Cypher's also got some existing integrations with CyberArk, and we've got some new integrations coming to market with, with CyberArk. If you're not familiar with CyberArk, they're the number one leader in privilege access management. They've got a large customer base, and most nonstop customers seem to have CyberArk as their enterprise password vault um, at a minimum, and most have actually integrated with their privilege session management solution. So a couple of years ago, Zypro partnered up with CyberArk and we brought the Zygate Identity Connector for CyberArk to market. And what that helps you do is integrate your nonstop with the CyberArk Enterprise Password Vault. So it ensures that all your credentials, privileged accounts, or what other accounts you want to have vaulted can be put in the CyberArk Vault and managed through a check-in, check-out process. So passwords are properly, using that method, passwords are properly rotated, your password policies are applied. If somebody checks out a password, they're only uh, allowed to use that password for a certain time window. Once, the pass, once that time window expires, the password is rotated in the vault and the user loses access. This is proper password management. It's much more efficient than running, writing your super, super password on a whiteboard in the data center. Um, or storing it in an envelope in somebody's desk. This is the evolution of what that, what that you know, quote unquote technology is of writing the password and putting it in somebody's desk. This is actually storing it in a secure digital vault. And CyberArk is a market leader when it comes to this type of technology. So our integration, Zypher's integration with CyberArk will help you integrate your nonstop credentials with the enterprise password vault, which is CyberArk vault. And like I mentioned in an earlier slide, it also extends now to your CLIM credentials. So you're not just confined to the non-stop credentials, you can vault your CLIM credentials and we're, we're working on technology that'll help you bring in other non-stop environmental passwords into the, into the password vault. So one of our newest integrations that we've been working on that will be available in Q1 this year is integration with the CyberArk Privilege Session Management Technology. What that is, is CyberArk can record and control all of your session activity when you're logging into the nonstop. Unfortunately, we all, we're all aware that the nonstop has certain nuances that doesn't lend itself to existing technologies quite seamlessly. 
So if you want to use the CyberArk PSM or password session management tool, you would be uh, you would be confined to using it only over SSH. So most of us use a 6530 emulator to, to perform our jobs on the nonstop because we've got applications that require block mode or we use function keys. None of that is available through CyberArk, through a CyberArk integration until now. Working with, uh, working with CyberArk, Zypro was able to develop a, a PSM driver that will enable you to use your CyberArk seamlessly into the nonstop using your existing 6530 emulator. Everything works, your block mode works, your function keys work. In fact, um, if you're familiar with what CyberArk does with the method I described, what would typically happen is you'd use a jump server. You'd connect from your workstation to a CyberArk jump server. The CyberArk jump server would then be used to SSH into the nonstop. The nonstop would only have visibility into the CyberArk jump server's IP address. We'd never see the uh, original user that's trying to connect to the nonstop. With this technology, you'll be able to see that entire thing end to end. And I'll show you a diagram of what that use case looks like in a minute. This is also the only CyberArk certified integration for the nonstop. If you contact CyberArk and ask them, how do I integrate my nonstop with CyberArk? They're gonna point you to this solution. This is what they support. This is what we support. This is the organic integration between the two. So we're talking about a couple of the use cases where CyberArk and the Zygate solution would fit in. Without Zygate Identity Connector for CyberArk, what would typically happen is a user would check out the password from the CyberArk password vault. So me being the user, Steve, I'd log into my CyberArk password vault and I'd say, I wanna check out the super, super password for system West. So CyberArk would give me a password, a temporary password. What would happen is for any other system that CyberArk is aware of, once I check out that password and my time window is out, for example, I only have access to that account for two hours, CyberArk would go and rotate that password in the vault. And then it would automatically synchronize that new password with the other endpoint that it's managing. So if that's an Active Directory account, if it's a Unix account, the mainframe account, what have you, CyberArk has the integration, the ability to reach into these technologies and automatically rotate that password. Fortunately, not so easy with the nonstop. So me as a user, I checked out the password for System West for two hours from the CyberArk password vault. Now those two hours are up, CyberArk rotated the password in the vault, but now an email has to be sent to a nonstop administrator a nonstop administrator has to manually log into the nonstop and reconcile that password to match what's in the CyberArk password vault. The vault is doing what it's supposed to do. It knows the timer's up, it's rotating the password, so it's got a new password assigned. The nonstop is not aware of that new password until an administrator goes in there and manually performs that, that password reset. So there's a big risk here because now I have access to that system for a lot longer than it was intended to. This is an audit red flag. This is a security problem. You, you're, you're gonna run into all types of issues here. Plus, not to mention the manual overhead this causes by having to send an email, having to have an administrator go in there the same day, maybe two days later, three days later, it's a three day weekend, whenever, to go in there and reconcile the password. With our Zygate integration, mainly our Zygate Identity Connector for CyberArk, I would do the same process, log into CyberArk, check out the password, and I've got access to that password for two hours. As soon as those two hours are up, CyberArk will rotate the password in the vault, and it'll reach out to nonstop and automatically and instantaneously rotate the password on the nonstop. No manual intervention, no time delay, everything is done right as uh, CyberArk executes it. So this addresses your, your manual processes, this addresses your security challenges, and ensures that your passwords are always in sync. This is available, this technology is available right now. This is our Zygate Identity Connector for CyberArk. Now, our new integration with CyberArk is for our 
PSM, is for CyberArk's PSM, Privileged Session Management. That'll be available here in Q1 of 2021. What would typically happen without this technology is a user would remote desktop into the CyberArk jump server for privilege access. So if I'm Michael Smith, I'm logging in from my workstation whose IP address ends in doc 65 into the CyberArk jump server where all of the CyberArk technology is installed. And then from the CyberArk jump server, I would SSH into the nonstop. Now I'm already at a disadvantage here because number one, I don't have my 6530 emulation because CyberArk can't support it. Number two, I'm gonna lose access to any application that requires a 6530 emulator. Number three, if you look at the IP address here, the nonstop sees the IP address of the CyberArk jump server as the user who's logging into the nonstop. It has no understanding that the actual client IP of who's logging in is different than the jump server ID. Now think about this. You've got multiple people using, using the same jump server. Every connection to your nonstop server, now the audits are gonna show the CyberArk jump server IP address. It's going to be very, very, very difficult to differentiate who's who, who's doing what, and where these connections are coming from. This also puts you at a disadvantage if you're going to use this data for threat detection, for analytics, or for other types of investigative activities. You're also lacking the Windows username. So if you're, for example, sharing IDs to log into the jump server, it's always going to have the same username. So you're not only getting the same IP address for every connection made from the CyberArk server, you're gonna have the same username in your audit. All that data is now sent to your SIM or your SOAR or your analytics tool, and it's gonna be very, very difficult to decipher who's doing what. Our new CyberArk integration will take care of all that. So we worked in conjunction with CyberArk to develop this. What would happen is you install a driver on the CyberArk jump server, which then captures, allows you to use your normal 6530 emulator. You've got full access to it. You can use your, your block mode applications. You can use your function keys. And just as important, it's going to capture all of the source information of the user who's connecting. So if Michael Scott, for example, on the left-hand side here is connecting from IP 150.65, we're going to see his Windows username, and we're going to see his non. We're going to see his Windows IP address in the nonstop audit logs because the Zygate driver on the CyberArk server was able to capture that and pass it on to the nonstop. Now you get the actual source information into your analytics tool, into your SIM, into your SOAR, and now you're not skipping a beat. You've got full access. Now your CyberArk integration with nonstop looks like every other integration with nonstop. And this is what I meant by when we're integrating nonstop into the rest of your enterprise, we want to make sure that it works seamlessly, that everything you're doing with open systems in your enterprise can extend seamlessly into the nonstop. And with this technology for CyberArk, you're going to get the same experience as you're used to with your other technologies and integrations into CyberArk. This will be available in Q1 this year. The other integration that we see in most environments is SailPoint for identity management and access governance. So in most environments, you've got CyberArk for your privilege session management and your enterprise password vault, and you've got SailPoint for your identity governance processes. Um, same thing with what we did with CyberArk. We developed a we developed an integration between nonstop and SailPoint, and in fact. Our integration, our Zygate Identity Connector for SailPoint, which is available now, is the only SailPoint certified integration for nonstop. So this will allow you to provision identities, deprovision identities, and reconcile or aggregate all of your nonstop user IDs into your SailPoint Identity IQ system. Again, typical use case without Zygate Identity Connector, you would provision an identity in SailPoint. SailPoint being your master record would go out and provision that user account 
in Active Directory, in Salesforce, in your IBM mainframe, or whatever applications you have connected to SailPoint. Nonstop becomes a manual process where an email needs to be sent to a nonstop administrator for them to go in and, and provision that user ID on the nonstop server. Now, this is an important process and manual because it's working for the provisioning process, but more importantly, deprovisioning also falls victim to this manual process. Meaning this whole thing in reverse when you need to offboard somebody is a bigger risk if you've got this manual process in place. What would typically happen is an administrator would go into sale point and disable or deprovision a user's identity. That would automatically reach into Active Directory, Salesforce, IBM, Unix, Linux, whatever other applications are connected and disable that user's access. Again, email has to be sent to a nonstop administrator for them to pick up and go in and manually disable their nonstop user ID. Depending on when that email is sent, it might be 24, 48, 72 hours before the administrator can get in there and deprovision the user ID. And in some cases where a lot of our customers are being hit by audit flags is they're never being deprovisioned. Those IDs are never being disabled. So that's where something like our identity connector for sale point is critical to a process like this. What that would do, so the same process with our Zygate identity connector, an account is, or an identity is provisioned in sale point. Sale point goes out and does its normal provisioning and nonstop now becomes an option in sale point. Same thing with deprovisioning. User goes in there, administrator goes into sale point, wants to disable or deprovision a user's identity. They would just do it within sale point. Sale point would automatically reach out to all of these different applications and systems and automatically deprovision or disable that user ID. Another activity or use case when it comes to sale point is reconciliation or aggregation, meaning being able to take all of your nonstop user IDs and import them into SailPoint to reconcile with existing identities in SailPoint. This is a very, very manual process in a lot of customer environments because most customers that are using nonstop have SailPoint. Most of them need to get the nonstop data into SailPoint, but before this identity connector existed, that was a manual process. What would happen is an, an administrator would export the nonstop data into an Excel file and then FTP it down or, or, or download it to a local workstation. They would then hand manipulate that user ID file or that report into a format, which then SailPoint could ingest. Then they would upload that report, email it, FTP it, however they got it over to the SailPoint administrator. The SailPoint administrator would then take this Excel file and import it into SailPoint. Now this has to be done in, in some um, in some environments has to be done on a weekly basis. Just think of the overhead and, and the room for error this introduces. Not to mention all the time it takes up where you could be taking that time to use towards something else. With our identity connector for SailPoint, everything's automatic. SailPoint will go out to the nonstop, bring all the user IDs, automatically reconcile them to your uh, sale point identities, and now you've got full visibility, visibility in real time with no manual intervention of, of uh, any of this process. This is all part of the identity connector um, functionality. This is available right now. So if you've got a project to integrate nonstop with sale point, let us know. We've got the solution for you. Okay, jumping into data analytics. Our Splunk integration has been getting a lot of attention lately. Um, the beauty of this is everybody has this integration. If you've got a nonstop server, you've got this integration out of the box, nothing to purchase, nothing to sell here. So everybody who wants to integrate nonstop with Splunk or nonstop with Elastic or QRadar, um, or any one of those other inter, um, um, analytics tools or SIMs or source, you've got the technology already available on your system to do that. Like I mentioned, included with every nonstop server, it's your single, and, and this is through our Zygate merged audit. 
It's your single repository for all security audit and application data. It allows you to integrate all of that data with your SIM, your security um, incident and event management, your SOARs, your automated response tools, or any type of log analytics tool that you have for compliance purposes, for threat detection, or whatever you use this data for. Merged Audit will go out to your nonstop and collect, parse, and normalize your data and enrich that data so you've got more information about that data than in its raw format. This is a requirement for compliance and auditing because um, there's not just PCI DSS, but a lot of compliance frameworks require you to take your security data and send that to a location, a hardened location, which then you can be used for forensics or analytics or, or general compliance reporting. This technology is also extensible to custom applications. So if you've got an application that, um, uh, a homegrown application or some other um, non-supported application, we can extend the technology to capture the log files into Merge Audit so you can integrate those into Splunk. And it's got very powerful real-time alerting and uh, reporting capabilities. So this, um, um, out of the box, you've got Merge Audit. It'll take all your nonstop data, ship it over to Splunk, ship it over to Elastic uh, using syslog format and or, or syslog protocol. Um, and that can be done over TCP or UDP. Um, everything can be encrypted. It supports SSL encryption, so end-to-end -end connectivity. Nothing's in clear text if you want it to be that way. And we've got some enhancements coming to Merge Audit over the next uh, over the next year. So we're looking at we're going to be adding the Splunk um, HTTP event collector. We'll be adding some additional REST APIs as well to allow you to connect to endpoints that don't support syslog but would would rather use an HTTPS or our REST API endpoint. And we're looking at bringing in additional data sources too. We know there's a bunch of applications out there that our customers are desiring to get into merged audit to allow them to report into Splunk. So we'll be adding some additional data sources too. This is just a sample of the type of reports that you can run once your data is into Splunk. For example, I can see how often my user ID file is, attempt, is accessed by somebody who's not super super. Uh, I can see super, super logon attempts. I can see how often my audits are rolling over. If you missed our Splunk webinar a couple of months ago, go to our website, www.zypro.com, and we list the top five use cases that you can do when you get your nonstop data into Splunk and what you should be monitoring in terms of security. Okay, so very hot topic uh, nowadays is multi-factor authentication. This has been a requirement for technology or security frameworks like PCI DSS and SOX and um, COBIT and other ones where you need to have not just to use name and password, but another factor to validate authentication before you grant access to the system. So again, if you've got a nonstop server, you already have this technology. You already have the ability to turn on multi-factor authentication for your nonstop server. It's already there, nothing to buy, nothing to sell. So what um, uh, user authentication does is not only introduce multi-factor authentication for your nonstop server, but extend safeguards authentication capabilities by giving you all types of granular control. Um, so out of the box, Safeguard controls can now be extended to have time and day and IP address restrictions and restricting logons by user, as well as integrating with Active Directory. XUA gives you the ability to integrate your nonstop servers with Active Directory, as well as multi-factor authentication. Uh, integrating with Active Directory will give you the capabilities for a single sign-on. So the same credentials you use to log into your Windows workstation can now be used to log into your nonstop server, federating your nonstop user ID. We also added a new optional module to XUA this year, um, which, will, which is extends the MFA, the multi-factor authentication capabilities to your nonstop applications. So for example, if you've got Base24 Classic in your environment, or if you've got another custom COBOL application in your environment, 
This module will allow you to introduce multi-factor authentication into the logon process for those applications. And this is a sample of what the screen will look like. So you would call our library where you would go through your normal authentication process in your application. And then before you're granted access, you would get a second screen, which will allow you to put in either an RSA secure ID token or a radius password or some other second factor before you're granted access to your application. That's available now. If you're interested in this optional module, let us know and we'd be more, more than happy to, to give you a, a proof of value of it, let you know, let's show you how it works, see if it'll plug into your application, get it working with your application and see if it helps address your, your multi-factor authentication requirements. We've also got some new innovation coming to uh, XUA over the next year, mainly around Java Web Tokens and OAuth 2 and SAML. And this will allow us to extend the vendor ecosystem that we support for in terms of multi-factor authentication to cloud providers as well. So introducing this will allow us to integrate with technologies like Ping Identity and Duo and um, Okta and Centrify. So all of those cloud directory services that provide authentication and multi-factor, XUA and your nonstop will be able to integrate with. We also know that a lot of our nonstop environments are getting away from a username and password for authentication and using biometrics or smart cards where the Active Directory credentials are integrated actually into the smart card. So we're working on technology this year that allow you to use your smart card that you would use to log into your Windows workstation to log into your nonstop as well. And I talked about the integration with cloud multi-factor authentication providers. So if you've got a need to integrate with, like I said, the pings, the duos, the octas, or somebody else, uh, Tychotic, if, if any one of these are in your environment and you need to integrate your nonstop or your applications with them, please let us know and we can extend the technology to allow you to do that. Not only do you get its integration capabilities with XUA, but you get the ability to enrich your authentication data. With XUA, with Zygate user, user Authentication, acting as your security event exit process, you get to capture and enrich your authentication data. Now this becomes critical when you're trying to provide analytics and threat detection from the data your nonstop generates. So for example, this is on the left-hand side. This is what an audit would look like in X, without XUA, where if you're using, and you should be using SSL to log into your nonstop server, because of the, the intricacies of the nonstop, you would always see the loopback IP address. You, would, you wouldn't see the actual source IP address of the user, but rather would see 127001 as the IP address where that connection attempt was coming from. Unfortunately, that becomes a very, very difficult, actually impossible to do any type of analytics or alerting on. With XUA, we're able to see the source IP address of any encrypted session that comes into the nonstop. So your audit now is enriched with the actual source IP address of the user that's attempting to log into your system. So you get to see the full username, what they're trying to log in as, the subject to target log on, as well as the source IP address. Now you can alert on IP address. Like I mentioned in the last slide, you can extend XUA. With XUA, you can extend safeguards authentication capabilities where you can restrict by IP address, you can restrict by user, by group, by time of day. All of that now becomes available. Again, I'm not selling anything when it comes to user authentication. You've already got it. Every capability I just mentioned, except for the um, multi-factor authentication support for applications, you've already got on your system. So if you want to turn on XUA, if you have a need for multi-factor authentication, turn it on, start benefiting from it. If you need help, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you with that. Okay, and to round it out of what we're doing this year is Zygate Security One. So those of you who are familiar with Zygate Security One, this is the next generation in nonstop cybersecurity. It's your unified security dashboard for all things nonstop. It gives you all types of metrics and security intelligence and analytics. Um, it's a modular application, which we'll see in a minute, which allows you to plug in functionality modules that expand how you can use Security One. 
So this is mainly our customers are using it for compliance and auditing, as well as threat detection and risk management. The key here is its main focus is correlation and more importantly, contextualization. We talked about your integration with Splunk and now you can send nonstop data to Splunk and create dashboards. The challenge there becomes is you can get the data into Splunk or you can get into QRadar or you can get it into Elastic, but that data is raw data and the Splunk end might not understand or does not understand the nonstop specifics, for example, what a pathway is, what a fup dupe command is, what um, particular command sequences are on the nonstop. So unless you've got somebody that's actively and constantly writing rules and patterns um, and signatures to allow you to detect all these nonstop specific um, activity from the raw data, it becomes an impossible task. So in most environments, they send nonstop data to Splunk the Splunk team checks the box and says, yes, we're receiving nonstop data. The nonstop team checks the box saying, yes, we're sending our data to Splunk, but neither team knows what happens next. Your Splunk, uh, they don't know how to interpret that data. And on the nonstop side, they don't know if there's something that they need to investigate, but they've been able to meet the compliance requirement of sending the data to a centralized location. With Security One, we'll take that raw data correlated, which means take one or, or two or more events, put them together with the, some sort of commonality that exists between both events, and then interrogate that new event or new incident to see, is this benign or is this something that I need to pay attention to? If it's something I need to pay attention to because we apply a layer of context to that new event, we will raise an alarm and let you know, yes, this event was correlated, put together, and you need to pay attention to this or no, it's benign, you can ignore it, it's just noise. Security One is delivered as a modular platform. So it allows you to license one or as many additional modules as, as your environment needs. So this, will, this runs in a modern browser interface, nothing to install on your workstation, you just pull up the website, log in and off you go. The more modules you, you license, the more intelligent the product becomes because the more access it has to additional data that it wouldn't have otherwise had. And the key here is, is that, is the more data it can ingest, the more intelligent it becomes, the more we can apply our intelligence and analytics to it to highlight what you should be paying attention to or what you can safely ignore. If you've ever been responsible for managing um, security alerts and events, you know, I have in a past, in, in, a, in a previous role, and I would get flooded at times with 500 events in a minute, and they all look identical, and I didn't know how to separate which one I need to pay attention to, so I would just click on the first one, shift, delete, or shift all the way to the bottom, click on the bottom, and delete the whole thing out of sight, out of mind, right? But one of those events is likely the one I need to pay attention to because there might be a successful authentication event in there. That's the problem security one solves. It goes through all of those events and tells you which one you need to actually pay attention to because this is a threat or a risk and which one of these um, you can safely ignore. So Security One is available right now. And the um, this compliance module is what we released late last year. And this is the evolution in nonstop security compliance. So what this does is it installs a new module within Security One that allows you to manage PCI DSS to, to verify PCI compliance, to verify nonstop hardening guide compliance, or if you have um, uh, organizational specific compliance rules that you need to um, meet or um, local compliance rules that you need to meet, Security One will enable you to do that. Again, it's just a module that gets plugged into um, Security One and gives you all the flexibility of what you're used to in other compliance monitoring tools like Qualys and Tenable and others that exist in the market. The interface is going to look very, very familiar. If you look at the screenshot here, we're looking at PCI DSS requirements 1 through 12 across the top. I can easily identify that requirement 8 is failing. I can click on requirement 8 and I can see all the sub requirements. I can see the individual sub requirement 8.3 is failing. I can click on that and see what's failing and why it's failing and what I need to do. 
I can also generate reports from here that I can give to my auditors. Um, some of our customers want to give read-only access to their auditors directly into this tool so to allow the auditor to run their own interrogations. You've got the ability to do that as well. So again, this is available as a module in Security One right now. Our file and system integrity monitor, again, is the evolution of security monitoring for non -SOP. So this gives you real-time file, user, process, and configuration monitoring. Configuration or, or system integrity monitoring is a key staple in just about every cybersecurity compliance framework. It's one of the baseline things that you need to do to get started on any system. It's 2021. I think it's one of those things that if you don't have integrity monitoring on any new system do you deploy, you're already behind the eight ball. You're already at a disadvantage. So it's a very quick, easy win to get a, a monitoring tool, an integrity monitoring tool in there and get the visibility to know that if something changes, you're gonna be aware of it. But when we talk about intelligent found, uh, intelligent integrity monitoring, in, in, in nowadays, it's no good on a very high transaction system to be alerted of every change because all that's going to do is create a ton of noise. With security, uh, with security one FIM file and in, uh, file integrity monitoring, you can boil that down to the important alerts that you want to know that if a file was touched, if a configuration setting was touched, if um, some other object was modified, that you're going to get the alert and you're going to get the right alert that is going to be actionable and you're gonna be able to, to correct them based on it. So not only will you be notified if something changes and, and who did it, but you're gonna get an entire history life cycle of that object of every time it was modified. You're gonna see, for example, if a configuration setting, every modification that was made, you're gonna see the previous value, you're gonna see the new value, you're gonna see um, who did it, what they changed, and in fact, if that change put your system at risk or violated a policy, you're going to know about it right away. And our last module, and this will be available this year in Q2, is our Appliance Sentry module for Windows. So you're, those of you who already have Security One know that it, got, it has capabilities to monitor your nonstop CLIMS. So you're able to see the security health of your nonstop uh, CLIMS. And these are your, your Linux servers that are, in your, that are acting as your disk controller, your network controller in your nonstop environment. But you've also got a Windows server that needs security and monitoring. And now with the Appliance Sentry module, the um, You've also got CLIM functionality, but now you can monitor your Windows console. So this will tell you things like who's logging onto your Windows console. Is your firewall on? Is your antivirus um, enabled? Are your definitions current? Are you missing Windows updates? So everything that the HP hardening guide states that you need to do and monitor for your Windows console, you'll get through this uh, appliance Sentry module. And this is just a module that you would plug into Security One with a license key and off you go, um, immediately getting this type of functionality. In most environments, the Windows console falls into a gray area because it's part of the nonstop ecosystem. So the nonstop folks don't really have, in some cases, the expertise to manage a Windows environment. The Windows folks say, that's not our, that's part of the nonstop, we're not touching that. And it falls into this, like I said, gray area where nobody's got eyes on this thing. But if you're familiar with what the capabilities are of a Windows console and what you can do with it, um, you want to get something like this. You want to get the eyes and the security cameras on there to make sure that it's hardened properly, it's secured properly, and you know if somebody's doing anything on there that they're not supposed to be doing. This will be available in Q2 of this year. And some additional functionality that we're gonna be adding to Security One this year is advanced data analytics. So if you're familiar with the types of metrics that Security One can give you, we're gonna take that and take it to the next level. So we're gonna be able to slice and dice this data all kinds of way. And the beauty of it is not only will you get this type of actionable metrics, but you'll be able to take this data and then forward it on to Splunk or QRadar or Elastic for integration with your rest of your enterprise picture. So you'll know 
that you can send, you can, you can contextualize your file integrity monitoring alerts or your security intelligence alerts or your application, your Windows console alerts. Get that in a, in a format that your Splunk or your Curator will be able to understand and ingest and get that data over there to, to make sure that it's part of the enterprise bigger picture. But from a nonstop perspective, for, for those of you responsible for managing the nonstop, you're gonna get all kinds of metrics uh, and being able to slice and dice data. So this is just, again, um, uh, the tip of the iceberg of the type of functionality that's coming this year in Security Month. And with that, um, I just wanted to re-highlight what we're gonna be focusing on for 2021. If any of the projects I mentioned, if any of the technology already integrations I mentioned, um, you've got an active project for, or if uh, you need to integrate with anything, you're nonstop with anything else in your environment, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you out with those. Like I said, we've either got the technology already available or it's coming down the pike here in the next, um, uh, next uh, short while, and we'd be happy to, get, uh, happy to get you an early version of that to make sure that it does what you're looking to do and it can accomplish your business requirements. So with that said, I do want to highlight our next webinar coming up on March 17th, and this is going to be primarily around keystroke logging for HPE non-stop servers, and this will focus on the benefits and the need of why you need to keystroke log everything on your nonstop servers. This is gonna be more of a technical presentation um, ran by, run by Rob Leeson, who's our senior solutions architect. So please, um, as soon as you see the announcement, you can go to our website, www.cypher.com and register there. And with that, I appreciate everybody's time today. I hope this was helpful in describing what Zypro has already worked on and is working on this year. If any of the technologies I mentioned are familiar to you and you've got an active project to integrate with them or have a need for technology like this, please feel free, reach out, let us know, and we'd be more than happy to help. And with that, I'm gonna jump over to the question and answer box and we'll have a little round of Q&A. So first question is how the ServiceNow connector is licensed. It's actually an add-on module to Zygate Access Control. So Zygate Access Control is what uh, handles your privileged session management on your nonstop. It's available through Zypro and it's available through HPE. The integration with uh, ServiceNow will be an add-on module that you would add to XAC via license code, and then it'll enable that workflow for XAC to, instead of executing the command, reach out to ServiceNow first and ensure it's got validation with a valid ServiceNow ticket, and only then execute the command. So it's an add-on module you would purchase to XAC. Uh, then that answers the second question of how does ServiceNow work with XAC? Without, X, without the ServiceNow integration in the picture, like I mentioned, XAC would work just as normal. If you have access to a privilege command, you execute it, and as long as you've got the permission to do so, that command will execute. With the ServiceNow integration, uh, you'll have a second level of validation before that command can have, will be executed. Then we've got a third question of, when will PCI DSS be released? Uh, I think that meant when will PCI DSS 4.0 be released? That is actually, that will be released by uh, the PCI Security Standards Council this summer. So in, uh, I believe, July, August, we'll see that being officially released. And just like previous PCI DSS requirements, um, you'll have two years to get to everything you need to do. But we're, we're jumping ahead of that and making sure that we're doing all of the evaluation to make sure that PCI DSS 4.0 will be covered with Zypro products for the HP nonstop server by early 2022. Okay. Um, it would be nice to point out our, um, what products are available through HPE. Um, well, obviously, like we talked about, you get Zygate Merged Audit and Zygate User Authentication as part of the operating system. So you get your multi-factor authentication capabilities, your Active Directory integration capabilities, and your Splunk integration capabilities 
out of the box, nothing to purchase, you've already got it. As far as what's available through HPE, um, Zygate Simon is available through HPE, as well as Zygate Access Control. You can also purchase our database management tools, Mura, SQL Express, and Mars. Mars is used as a very critical tool for um, database um, reloading and defragmentation. So if you need those types of capabilities, those products are also available. So with that, I appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to our roadmap. If you have any questions, please feel free to follow up. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone.